Hi students, so today we start lecture 36 of our aerospace engineering course and today I'm going to discuss gliding flight. So this is a situation which can often happen in aircraft and of course there are specific aircraft also known as gliders which make use of this gliding flight phenomena. I'm Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now here what I have done is I have drawn an aircraft and it's an aircraft with engines being present but let's assume that the engines are not working so this is a situation which can happen every now and then now many of the aircraft you see in flight they have only two of these engines present and therefore there could be a situation it's a very unlikely situation but it could happen that these engines are both not working so let's imagine such a situation happens now in that kind of situation, the airplane doesn't just have to fall off to the ground. There is a phenomena known as gliding, which the pilot can use to sail, to glide this aircraft and then to land it at some location. So we are going to discuss this particular phenomena. Now, beside this kind of gliding, there is also a set of aircraft known as gliders. And these are aircraft which do not have engines at all. And in fact, these are aircraft which you can release from a certain high point maybe from a mountain or from some different powered aircraft and then they can essentially loiter around in the air for a pretty long time so sometime people use these gliders to essentially check out various scenarios they are nice in the sense that as far as engines are concerned they do not have them they do not have any power trail they do not have any emissions for that matter so there are certain things about gliders which we are going to also discuss at the end of this video so let's get back to this aircraft here so we know there is going to be the weight which is acting downward and of course because you have a nice airfoil section you have wings there is going to be a lift generated by this aircraft and certainly there is going to be a drag because drag is always there in life drag is part of the skin friction it's part of the pressure drag, it's the induced drag and so on. Now what's missing in this picture is the thrust because of course when you are in gliding flight or you are a glider, you do not have any thrust. So what happens in this case that you essentially use this angle theta, the flight path downwards and this downward flight path is used to create a kind of component of weight in the thrust direction so you can clearly see here that there will be a weight component in the thrust direction that's going to be w sine theta so that's going to counter the drag and also the lift is going to be supported by the weight in this direction or rather i should say the weight in this direction is going to be supported by the lift so both these are possible if you have a theta here now Generally, you want to keep this theta as low as possible because that's going to let you glide at a very good glide path. You want this angle to be as low as possible. For example, if there are passengers sitting in the aircraft, you don't want to subject them to a very steep glide path. They may not like that situation very much. So let's immediately start writing the equations for this. So you can immediately see that in the vertical direction i can get l equals w cos theta and in the flight path direction i get d equals w sine theta so this is the component which is actually playing the role of a thrust here so these are the two equations which are there for a glider so now what i can do is i can write these two equations down and immediately i can divide these two equations so i get d by l is w sin theta by w cos theta and so i know immediately this is tan theta because tan theta is sin theta by cos theta so i can write tan theta is 1 by l by d now like i mentioned before you essentially want a smooth glide path so you want theta to be minimum which of course would mean that tan theta would be minimum also so what would happen in that case is that if you want to minimize the angle theta minimize tan theta then you need to maximize l by d so that's the condition which you need and that of course becomes a condition of aircraft design or wing design because essentially you are saying that you want to maximize l by d and also of course you need to fly this aircraft in a 
velocity situation such that L by D gets maximized. So now one of the objectives of any situation where you have a gliding kind of phenomena taking place is that you want to fly this aircraft as long as possible without any thrust and then you want to land at some landing strip. Now this could be some nearby airport so if you are fortunate then many situations you have an airport nearby. If not maybe you are forced to land in some field or in some road or something like that that is also sometime possible though it's risky that depends on the pilot's call the pilot has to take a call on this so now if we take the same path let us say we are at height h when the aircraft has started gliding and so this is the flight path or the glide path they are both same here this angle is going to be theta from geometry which is same as this angle and so from geometry i can immediately write that tan theta is h by r or this is actually the definition from trigonometry of tan of this angle is h divided by r. So I get one more equation for tan theta. So now what I can do is I can take the two equations for tan theta. So one equation was 1 by l by d equals d by l and I can equate it to the second equation I got which is h by r. So essentially this is the equation I have got here and here do remember h is the height at which the airplane is flying and r is the range or the distance from the current point to maybe the landing point at some distance from the aircraft. So I can immediately write r is h l by d from this equation here. So I'm getting r is h l by d. So let's make certain points about this glider type of situation we can see that airplanes can glide if the engines fail and they try to reach a landing strip now emergency landing can be made at nearby airport so you sometimes see this happening and also they can be made in situations like in fields and sometimes even roads and in frozen rivers and lakes so this has also been attempted in various countries around the world depending on the location you are at. Sometimes people even land these aircraft in rivers and some emergency may come and try to save the people there so the airplane may float for some time. Now let's turn our attention to actual gliders. Now gliders are very often used by people who are enthusiasts in terms of flying. They are also pilots who want to get some experience about how to glide and so essentially these gliders do not have engines they are released at a certain velocity and they can fly for a long time sometimes they use air currents and so on so various weather phenomena are there which can be exploited by skilled pilots and glider pilots to essentially fly these gliders for as long time as possible but do remember that gliders are prone to certain problems for example if they encounter mountains hills large water bodies such as lakes rivers and even the sea they may be in big trouble because they do not have power so they may not have control about where they are going to land so one of the things which is often done in gliders is that most glider pilots fly with parachute so essentially this is a situation which is very important because most of the time glider flight is pretty safe they can essentially fly for a long period of time and they can land somewhere but in case they have problems with that there are these parachutes which they can use to essentially bail out of the aircraft and land on their own and let the glider seek its own destination. So one of the positive facts about gliding flight of course is that the gliders do not have engines and they do not have fuel so in case they do land in a bad manner the chance of a fire is less but when you have a real aircraft you cannot just land it in any place you have to be really careful about where you're landing it so most of the time you have to find a nearby airport so there are certain situations where some airplanes are directed to actually take routes which are land routes they are told not to fly across the wide seas such as the pacific or the atlantic but increasingly this is becoming less because the engines nowadays are extremely reliable and so therefore they are able to manage most of the time. So it is very very rare I should say that both the engines of a large 
transcontinental jet will fail. So what's typically kept in mind is that even if one engine were not to work, the person can essentially use one of the engines to land somewhere else or land at some airport. So that's something which is certainly useful. But in the old days when the reliability of engines was less, you had aircraft with four engines, for example, the Boeing 747 and some of those planes. So in those cases, there was a large factor of safety involved. So I'll end this video here and I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.